Hey math students, today we're going to talk about, well today we're going to talk about trigonometric identities. And you might be wondering, what's an identity? Um, an identity is, well it's a, it's a statement of equality, okay, this equals this. The way that I think about it, it's kind of like a fun fact about trigonometry. Uh, and identities aren't just about trigonometry, they can be about kind of any, any topic at all. Uh, but um, we like to look at trigonometric identities kind of as a way to take inventory of all the different things that we've been finding out about trig functions and how they relate to one another. Um, so uh, let, let's just get right into it and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So fundamental trigonometric identities. Uh, the first ones we have are the reciprocal identities. Okay, so these... Um, You've known this forever. I mean, you've known this since uh, I first uh, taught you about cosecants and secants and cotangents, okay? We said, let's talk about what sines and cosines and tangents are, and then everything on the, on the right is going to be a, uh, uh, just the reciprocal of what's on the left. So we already know this. The one thing to keep in mind is, if cosecant is the, is the reciprocal of sine, then sine is also the reciprocal of cosecant, meaning if cosecant is 1 over sine, then sine is also one of a cosecant. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the next ones, the uh, um, quotient identities, you've also known these for a long time. Okay, we've, we've mentioned several times that the tangent of theta is the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And if the tangent of theta is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, and the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, then the cotangent of theta must be the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. It only stands to reason, okay? Uh, now, the co-function identities. We mentioned these uh, once, actually when we were first looking at um, uh, right triangle trigonometry. So let's take a look at, the, at a right triangle again. Here's a right triangle. Um, and you'll notice from this right triangle that uh, um, angle A, the sine of angle A is A over C, right? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle B is also A over C. So the sine of angle A and the cosine of angle B are the exact same ratio. Likewise, the sine of angle B is B over C. The cosine of angle A is B over C. So that means the sine of B and the cosine of A are exactly the same. And this should ring a bell, okay? Um, so. What do angle A and angle B have in common? Well, they're complementary angles. How do we know that? Well, they're the two other angles in a right triangle, so that means their measures must equal up to 90 degrees, and that's pretty much the definition of what a complementary angle is. So what we're finding is for any complementary angle, the sine of one of, one of them will be the cosine of the other, and the cosine of one will be the sine of the other. Okay. And we can also see this in, uh, in the unit circle. So let's say, let's say our blue angle here is going to be, uh, uh, we'll call that one theta. And the red angle is going to be uh, 90 minus theta. That way when we add them up, it'll equal 90 degrees. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even going to call it 90 minus theta. Let's talk in radians, okay? So 90 degrees is equivalent to uh, pi over 2 radians. So that means the blue angle it will be theta, and the red angle will be pi over 2 minus theta, and those are complementary angles. And so that's why when you look at where they hit the, the unit circle there, you'll notice that the cosine of the blue angle is x and the sine of the blue angle is y. Well, the cosine of the red angle, pi over 2 minus theta, is y, and the sine is x because the sine of one equals the cosine of the other. And this is true for... Uh, for acute angles, that is angles in the first quadrant, but it's also true for angles that are in the second quadrant and the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Okay, that as we look at those angles, we notice that every time uh, that that for in, in every case, uh, the sine of theta equals the cosine of pi over two minus theta, and the cosine of theta equals the sine of pi over two minus theta. Okay, so those are two identities that we know. And then as far as the tangent, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent, well, all we have to do 
is use the, uh, the, the quotient and reciprocal identities that we already know, do a little algebra, and it gets us uh, uh, the rest of our uh, cofunction identities there. And what I mainly want to, what I want you to notice here is the co in cofunction, okay? That the cosine of theta is the sine of the complement of theta, and the cotangent of theta is the tangent of the complement of theta. And I think I've mentioned this to you once before, that co in cosine and cotangent and cosecant actually stands for complement. That's where the word comes from, okay? So, next ones. We have our even odd functions. Now, you probably, you probably are thinking to yourself, oh yeah, 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 I know this one. We've pointed this out several times, that uh, the sine function is odd and the cosine function is even. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, and how do we know that? We know that by looking at an angle and the negative of that angle. So this time our blue angle, we're going to say that's theta and the red angle is going to be negative theta. Okay, and of course the difference between theta and negative theta is that negative theta is just theta reflected over the x-axis. Well, when it reflects over the x-axis, what happens to the x-coordinate? Nothing. What happens to the y-coordinate? It turns negative. Or if it was negative before, now it turns positive. Either way, it's multiplied by negative 1. So if x and y are the cosine and sine of uh, theta, respectively, then x and negative y will be the cosine and sine of negative theta, whether theta is in quadrant 1 or whether it's in quadrant 2 or even if it's in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. So what does that mean? It means the sine of negative theta is the negative sine of theta. And the cosine of negative theta is just the cosine of theta. And if you remember, that is the precise definition of what an odd function and what an even function are. That the sine is, uh, uh, is an odd function and the cosine is an even function. Now, again, you might be saying, well, what about tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent? Well, again, just using uh, the uh, quotient and reciprocal identities that we uh, that discussed at the very beginning, uh, you can see that the tangent of negative theta is going to be the sine of negative theta over the cosine of negative theta, which means it's the negative sine of theta over the cosine of theta, which means it's the negative tangent of theta, which means tangent is odd. And then you can go through and show that all the other ones are odd or even, and so you end up with these identities. And really the thing to notice is that uh, four of them are odd, and two of them are even, and the two even ones are cosine and secant. Okay? And now, finally, uh, the last bunch of identities, the Pythagorean identities. So, no matter what kind of angle you have, whether it's in quadrant one, or quadrant two, or quadrant three, or quadrant four, you can always draw a triangle. Uh, looking at the unit circle, you can always draw a triangle where you have a, uh, a horizontal side, a vertical side, and then the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, since we're on the unit circle, is always one. The horizontal side is going to be, the length of that is going to be the absolute value of whatever x is, whether it's positive or negative. The vertical side, the length of that, is going to be the absolute value of whatever the, uh, of whatever y is, okay? And so what that tells us is, using the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is 1. Now, on the unit circle, what's y? What's x? Well, y is the sine and x is the cosine, so if y squared plus x squared is 1, that means that the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. Okay? Now, I've mentioned this once before because I remember telling you once before about this notation, that this is weird notation. Uh, you're looking, you might be looking at that saying sine squared of theta. Why didn't you just say sine of theta, put it in parentheses, and square it? Yeah, that, that would actually make really good sense. And uh, if I were in charge, that's exactly what we would do, and I'm not in charge. Uh, this is somewhat confusing notation, but it's the notation that we have. So when you see sine squared of theta, what that means is the sine of theta squared. Okay? So sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared is 1 squared, also known as 1. So that's why we write there sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now we have two other 
Pythagorean identities. And the way we get the first one is we take that first identity and we divide everything by the cosine squared. So our first term is now sine squared over cosine squared, which is tangent squared. Our second term is cosine squared over cosine squared, which is a 1. And our third term is 1 over the cosine squared. And what, and what that tells us is that the tangent squared of theta plus 1 is the secant squared of theta, also one of our Pythagorean identities. And finally, the last one, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to start with uh, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And then we're going to divide all of those by the sine squared. And what do we end up with? Well, the cosine squared divided by sine squared is uh, cotangent squared. Sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. And uh, uh, 1 divided by the sine squared is cosecant squared. So we end up with these three uh, um, Pythagorean uh, identities. So here we have the list of all the fundamental trigonometric identities. Now, should you know these? Yes. Should you memorize them? I don't think that's necessary, okay? And here's why. Uh, the reciprocal identities and the quotient identities, you probably have memorized those anyway. So that's already done. The co-function identities, I don't think you need to memorize those. I think you just need to remember the whole concept that co means, a cosine means the sine of a complement and a cosecant means the secant of a complement. And so that'll tell you what the, uh, what the relationship is uh, between those functions. Uh, the even and odd ones, I think uh, really the easiest way to remember that is to think about what a cosine function looks like uh, and how it's nice and symmetrical about the uh, y-axis, and that's what even functions look like. So that'll help you remember that the cosine is even. And since the secant is just the reciprocal of the cosine, well, that one's going to be even too, and those are your two even functions. And then finally, the Pythagorean identities. Um, definitely know that the sine squared plus the cosine squared is 1. I mean, matter of fact, if you forget everything that you've learned this semester and you only remember one fact, let it be that one, okay? Remember that the, uh, that the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta, for any theta, for any angle at all, the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. And how do you get the other ones? Just like we did. Okay, just remember that, oh yeah, I can divide every term by sine squared, I can divide every term by cosine squared, and I can easily derive those other two identities. Okay, so these are the fundamental trigonometric identities. Why do we need them? Well, because this is like our tool belt. Okay, this is what we're going to use to simplify expressions, to solve equations. Uh, this is, uh, th this, these are the tools that we're going to use to make uh, expressions much simpler and much easier to deal with, okay? See you later. Till the next video. Bye-bye.